Hey, what's going on, visionaries? Jason Osborne back again with another video. And I know this is a different look for you guys. I know that you're not used to seeing me standing up or, you know, seeing this view of my office. I'm currently in the middle of a move and my office is kind of destroyed right now. Still got to put that content out for you guys and no excuses, no days off. Today, what are we talking about? Well, I'm going to be talking about the best lens for event photography. What lens would I recommend to anyone who's looking to get into event photography? What I consider a must have, something that can save a lot of time can save you a lot of cost as far as having to buy extra lenses this lens definitely is something that you should consider buying if you are trying to be an event photographer whether it be corporate events weddings birthdays etc etc this is the lens that you're absolutely going to need in your kit and i'm going to talk about it coming up So what lens is this magic lens that I'm talking about? Well, as many of you have probably have already guessed or taken a gander at, all right, it is the 24 to 70, okay? Now, me personally, I have the Canon 24 to 70 2.8 Mark II, all right? But if you wanna go ahead and use a Sigma 24 to 70 or a Nikon or a Sony 24 to 70, it's more about the focal length than the actual lens itself. Why the 24 to 70? To begin with, you know, it covers so many of the popular lens ranges that you might have individual prime lenses for. Before I got my 24 to 70, I literally was bringing a 24 millimeter, a 50 millimeter, and an 85 millimeter to me with my events. Now, I still bring all of those lenses with me just as backups, of course, but the 24 to 70 will take care of pretty much all of those focal lengths except for the 85 but i rarely will have to go to the 85 and if i have to then i'll just put on my 70 to 200 but the 24 to 70 is such a versatile workhorse lens and which is why it is one of the most popular lenses no matter what kind of camera that you have you can get that wide angle 24 focal length and get lots of beautiful group pictures entire building scenes entire rooms um, things that can capture the settings and then you can go ahead and go to 35 millimeter tighten it up for a group shot or tighten it up for some details go into 50 for even more tighter and then if you're looking to get some portraits done you can go between 50 and 75 and you'll never have to take the lens off of your camera now when you have other lenses like prime lenses yes they might be a little sharper because they don't have a zoom they're not telephoto but if you have for example the problem what I kept running into was that I'd be shooting a wedding or an event I'd be shooting with a 50 a 50 millimeter which would cover most of the bases I could back up a little bit but in tight spaces where I had to shoot a large group picture or get a big scene of the room I'd have to stop to hold on change out to my 24 millimeter and then continue to shoot and then go back to the 50. And then if I needed a longer lens than a 50, then I would have to hope that it was in that, you know, I was still had enough room to get the 85 on, um, or I would have to keep the 50 on and then walk up to whatever zoom length that I needed. The 24 to 70 pretty much retired all of those lenses. Now I still use the 50, the 85 uh, mostly, or portrait work, things like that, because I do love the sharpness of primes can offer. But the 24 to 70 is also, if you get a new 24 to 70, and when I say new, I don't mean like brand new out the box, I mean a new generation, meaning it's more current. If you buy a first generation Canon 24 to 70, it's not gonna be as sharp as the new 24 to 70 Mark II. So if you are gonna buy one, make sure you get a current generation one. But like I said before, they are pretty sharp these days. The Canon 24 to 70 2.8, which is the one that I just showed is a sharp lens for a telephoto even at 2.8 which is definitely a plus and bonus for those tax sharp bocalicious pictures that you're definitely going to want to get and also I know that Sigma they make a great 24 to 70 Nikon Sony they also make their own versions of a 24 to 70 so you definitely want to think about owning a 24 to 70 if it's something that you feel can help out your quickness, your organization, and also your shooting when you're shooting events because it can cover so many different focal lengths that you would have to have individual lenses for and can just save you so much more time. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the 24 to 70 2.8, especially for Canon, can be pretty expensive. I didn't get it right away, I saved up some money, and I actually got mine used. Now, it was in mint condition used, like it came in the box, plastic was still on it, everything. It was almost like I bought it right out the store, that's how mint condition it was. But I still bought it used, and that saved me a couple hundred bucks. And you can do the same thing. If you can't afford a brand new one, go on eBay, 
check out Facebook Marketplace, uh, you know, Craigslist, you know, be safe about all those things, but you can still get a quality 24 to 70 lens on the used market. And that's going to be something that you're going to be absolutely happy that you did. The 24 to 70 is definitely worth the money, even though it can be one of the more expensive lenses for Canon. I'm not sure if Nikon or Sony offers this, but for Canon, they also offer a 24 to 70 F4 lens. So instead of having a wide open aperture of 2.8, it's going to start at F4. You might have a little trouble shooting with it indoors due to that F4 constraint, but if you're shooting mostly outdoor events or you just want to have a 24 to 70 and you're going to have the light to use it indoors, then definitely save yourself some of that money and get the F4 24 to 70 if you can't afford the 2.8. It's one of the lenses that I can absolutely say is worth the money. It's worth you saving for, it's worth you um, bargaining for, it's worth you absolutely trying to get one, your hands on one through the used trade sale. For the Canon version, it is an L series lens, okay? It's pretty nice. It does have weather sealing on the back, metal ring, and um, there's no stabilization with it, but you don't really need it. And you know, it has this lock feature as well. So when you're holding it down or if it's on the camera, this might slide out a little bit, you can lock it and it won't move and it'll keep the zoom lens right in place. Glass on this lens is beautiful and I really have nothing else really much to say about it. You know, this isn't really a review of the Canon 24 to 70 2.8. This is more of just saying why I believe the 24 to 70 is the best lens you can own if you are an event photographer, because you know, it just covers so many focal lengths that you're gonna have to cover during an event. It can do it all. It is literally the workhorse. And on top of that, it's great for fashion photography. I wouldn't really use it for headshots because of the focal length. You know, you're not gonna get that nice compression that a 70 to 200 or 85 can give you. But hey, if you need to, you can def definitely do it. But for portrait work, landscape, architecture, city, urban, street photography type of work, and event photography, the 24 to 70 is definitely gonna get it done. That's all I got for you guys today. I know it's a quick video, but you guys like quick videos, right? Who wants to just hear me talk for hours? You know, I don't, I don't even like to hear myself talk for hours, to be honest. But uh, yeah, quick video. Uh, I'm probably gonna do a next couple of videos just how it is right here. So I apologize for the look and the disorganization. Um, but you know, hopefully uh, sooner than later, you'll see me in the new spot that we're moving to. And uh, you know, I'll be back to my usual look. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments about the 24 to 70 that I just showed, leave it in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Talk to you later. Peace.